Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. NFT is dead. Recall that the craze surrounding NFTs began sometime in late 2021 to early 2022. In fact, right here we have this rather embarrassing clip of Jimmy Fallon promoting Board Ape Yacht Club. This is a video uploaded back in January 24th, 2022, around the peak of NFTs before it started to crash when people realized how useless NFTs are. They're not even the actual assets that they claim you're buying. It's just a receipt to that asset. It's like, you know, a, a certificate that says you own a piece of the moon. It's like that level of this is worth actually nothing. And it's just the investors who give it worth. And it's just trying to turn, you know, crypto and blockchain and all these elements into investment opportunities by trying to promote assets attached to those NFTs, be it JPEGs or music or art or whatever it is, uh, that ultimately paved the road to an environment that was woefully unregulated, that paved the road to people getting scammed constantly, and uh, to people realizing that none of this is useful in any way, and it's just the way to pull a bunch of money together so that the people who are lucky enough or who know how to play the game can siphon that money. Only a select few got rich off of this, while many others lost a lot of money, especially now that NFTs have plummeted so much that the vast majority of them are completely worthless. But before we get to that, a bit more history about where NFTs have been. Not long after NFTs began to crash in late 2022, celebrity promoters began to get sued over their promotion of Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs. Names listed in the suit included Madonna, Kevin Hart, Stephen Curry, Snoop Dogg, Serena Williams, uh, Post Malone, The Weeknd, Fallon's production company Electric Hot Dog Inc., and Universal Television, among others. Then there is uh, Justin Bieber, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Kevin Hart, who also contributed to promoting this stuff. And then some folks like Seth Green uh, went as far as trying to make an NFT show off of the bored ape that he bought. But then that bored ape was stolen from him after he fell for a scam. So he had to pay a bunch of money to get it back. And on my side of the fence, as someone more involved in the voiceover scene, it was disappointing to see some people I look up to like Tara Strong and Troy Baker get involved in NFTs. Though Troy Baker did admit that he just didn't look into it all that much and walked it back, ending his partnership with voice first nft which not long after troy baker's endorsement was confirmed to have stolen work from other people and that's another thing about nfts people take images artwork digital assets and whatnot that don't belong to them and turn them into nfts and sell them off without the original creator's permission theft is commonplace in the nft landscape and now we're at a point where nfts have crashed and plummeted so much that rarely anyone really mentions them anymore but in terms of value of NFTs, there are examples like this one where Justin Bieber purchased this Bored Ape NFT back in January 2022 when it was worth $1.31 million. Its worth has since plummeted to just under $60,000. Uh, yeah, uh, I believe we call that a net loss. Now, for Justin Bieber, a million bucks is a drop in the bucket. This is not going to impact him in any significant way. But for people who fell for NFTs as a result of endorsements from the likes of Justin Bieber, who maybe invested a significant amount of money, those people have been severely damaged financially. They don't have the kind of safety net that celebrities do with how much money they constantly make. And it's not just celebrities, but also, quote unquote, influencers like Logan Paul, who was recently exposed for his crypto zoo scam this game that was supposed to yield profits for those who invested in that ecosystem's NFTs. But not only did that game never really get completed, not only did it launch completely broken and dysfunctional to the point where people who invested in NFTs before the game launched or whatever, they essentially lost all that money. Logan Paul, despite promising to repay those who invested in CryptoZoo, has yet to offer any sort of restitution. So yeah, with NFT, scams are commonplace, not just among those who kind of hide from the shadows and try to get people to click malicious links, but also those who openly flaunt NFTs, people who are famous, who take advantage of the goodwill of their fan base to essentially milk money from those who are in less fortunate positions. There's also this embarrassment surrounding the NFT of the first ever tweet, which you can see embedded right here. It's Jack Dorsey tweeting, just setting up my Twitter published back in March 21st, 2006. This NFT was sold by Jack Dorsey for $2.9 million to Sina Esavi, CEO of Malaysia-based cryptocurrency company Bridge Oracle. And Sina's plan was then to sell this NFT for significantly higher for 
48 million dollars and donate half of the result to charity the biggest bid that he got i kid you not was $280. And then as of October of 2022, the highest bid that this NFT got was $132.72. And then fast forward to July of 2023, this NFT is now worth less than $4 in today's market. Bottom line is, NFTs have proven to be a huge waste of money for those who invested significantly in them. And that goes doubly true now when you look at the current state of NFTs as a whole. But you know what will make sure that you don't waste money? The sponsor of today's video, Rocket Money an all-in-one finance platform whose goal is to help you save more and spend less. For someone like me who has quite a few subscriptions and bills to manage and might not always be able to keep track of them, this app comes quite handy, making it easy to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, and grow your savings all in one convenient and accessible place. With how easy the app makes it to take a look at and cancel subscriptions, you'll always have an awareness of what companies are charging you and will never have to bother with any annoying processes for canceling as they are just one tap away. As far as bills go, you can upload pictures of your bills to Rocket Money, and they'll actually try to negotiate lower rates and bills for you in case companies are overcharging you for, say, internet, cable, and phone. You can even set budgets on Rocket Money, with the app notifying you when those budgets are exceeded, as well as monitor your credit score. And for those conscientious about savings, a smart savings function allows the app to automatically deposit savings into a smart savings account with you being able to control the amount and frequency and being able to withdraw from it at any time. And on top of all that, the app has the ability to give you a clear picture of what your net worth is, which will allow you to manage your finances even better. There's a reason why 3.4 million people are using this app. It's a great all-in-one solution for finance management. You can get started for free by using my link, rocketmoney.com slash yongya, and you can unlock even more features and functionalities with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash yongya to get started for free. Despite all of the red flags surrounding the NFT landscape, video game companies, the gaming industry, wants to get in on it by promoting them as the next evolution in gaming when, when they explain it, you realize, oh, right, they're completely useless. It's just another monetization tactic that will end up making games worse, as microtransactions did when they corrupted game design. So where are NFTs now? Well, this research by dapgamble.com will tell you the headline speaks for itself. Dead NFTs, the evolving landscape of the NFT market. And this study right here essentially breaks down what the net worth is of nfts this is across the board across all of the different collections and the picture that this paints is that nfts have declined so much that 95 percent of nfts are estimated to be literally worthless as in a value of zero dollars with pieces from top collections mostly worth five to ten dollars which you might as well include in the worthless category while it's not zero dollars five to ten dollars is not the grand promise of riches that NFTs promise to investors. And beyond that, roughly 25 million people are sad on dead assets thanks to celebrity endorsements. The speculative bubble has popped. 25 million people engage in NFTs. That's more than I expected, but that's 25 million people who now feel rather stupid. Or at the very least, tricked by celebrities who they thought had fans' best interest in mind. But given all of the warning signs surrounding NFTs, any celebrity who engaged with them and promoted them were self-serving, plain and simple. If you want all the nitty-gritty details, check out this page from Dap Gamble. If you just want a more condensed, summarized version, here's an article from Business Insider, whose headline reads, Remember when NFT sold for millions of dollars? 95% of the digital collectibles may now be worthless. Let's break down the numbers even more specifically. Out of 73,257 NFT collections the researchers looked at, 69,795 of them, or slightly over over 95% had a market cap of zero ether. Again, completely worthless. I mean, NFTs have always been worthless, but in terms of that monetary value that people or NFT bros have collectively acknowledged, in that sense, literally worth zero. Here's a quote from the researchers that reads, this daunting reality should serve as a sobering check on the euphoria that has often surrounded the NFT space. Amidst stories of digital art pieces selling for millions and overnight success stories, it is easy to overlook the fact that the market is fraught with pitfalls and potential losses. We hear a handful of stories about people who got super rich from NFTs and suddenly the masses are thinking, well, what if I get on this too? What if I can also get rich? What if I can win that lottery? 
and they think that they have pretty good odds and they think that there is some way to game the system, that there is some way to do this smartly. And uh, if they just, you know, invest a good amount of money and they say the course and trust these people, then eventually one day it'll pay itself back. But uh, yeah, the vast majority have incurred significant losses. Only those at the top of the pyramid are the ones who got rich off of this and they got rich off of all of that money gathered below them that got siphoned upwards uh, and that left the people at the bottom with nothing. As I described previously, it was in late 2021 to 2022 that the NFT market saw a huge bull run at one point leading to $2.8 billion in monthly trading volume, which is absolutely insane, which is why so many jumped on the bandwagon, all this FOMO. But, you know, the writing was on the wall for many about how this could just be a very quick bubble that would burst in an instant and crash so hard that it would make people head spin, which it absolutely did for those who trusted in NFTs to the level that they did. It's that feeling of needing to capitalize on this now because a lot of people seem to be getting on it and enough people seem to be getting really rich and successful from this. But, you know, a lot of those people don't actually do the homework and really look into what NFTs are, what the criticisms surrounding them are, and what the pitfalls are. And so they they just they lose the forest for the trees. And this is not a situation that will be easy for NFTs to recover from, especially when the study shows that 79% of all NFT collections currently remain unsold and the surplus of supply over demand has created a buyer's market that isn't doing anything to revive enthusiasm. Not to mention that people are realizing that there's no reason to be enthusiastic about NFTs, especially after this crash has incurred so many losses to people, especially after people like Logan Paul have exploited NFTs to uh, siphon money off of his fan base. Now that we're hearing more than just a few success stories and all these stories about financial ruin, suddenly people are snapping out of it and realizing, oh, like th this is just one big scam. At least with the current implementation of NFTs, it's just wild, wild west, woefully unregulated, easy to trick people, easy to have things stolen, easy to lose money, and easy to fall for endorsements that are selfish in nature. The current implementation of NFTs doesn't solve any problem. It doesn't give us anything useful in life. All it does is create artificial scarcity on digital assets. Digital assets that can easily be screenshotted and downloaded and whatnot. Uh, it, it's just so pointless to try to treat digital artwork as rare items when that, that's just not the case, unlike physical items that do have unique properties to them that could potentially be treated as rare. And then zooming into just the top collections of NFTs, excluding all of those other collections that have essentially died off, out of the top 8,850 collections by market cap, 18% of them are worthless and 41% of them are priced at five to a hundred dollars. Even among the collections that haven't completely died off, it's looking pretty damn bleak, especially when fewer than 1% have a price tag above $6,000, a far cry from the regular million dollar deals of two years ago. With the current state of NFT prices, nobody's really gonna get rich off of this. That opportunity doesn't exist. So plenty of people are just not gonna wanna engage, celebrities in particular. They're not gonna wanna endorse this thing that's now as good as dead. And uh, those looking to make a quick buck are going to look at this and go, uh, oof, uh, there's really no point to this, at least those who are paying attention to what's going on here. Here's one more quote that Business Insider put in their article. It becomes clear that a significant portion of the NFT market is characterized by speculative and hopeful pricing strategies that are far removed from the actual trading history of these assets, said the researchers. Additionally, this apparent disconnect between listed prices and actual sales could suggest that many sellers are waiting for another massive surge in NFT interest akin to the boom witnessed in 2021, which may not ever occur again. And if it does occur again, be warned, it is only going to be momentary. It's going to go in a flash like that. It's going to rise up and crash again. And you better not invest your life savings in this shit. The technology of NFT is not necessarily dead. Maybe there is a way to apply the technology of NFT in interesting ways. But when it comes to this idea of digital assets as NFTs with NFTs being essentially receipts that link to those assets, like that whole concept and trying to turn these into investment opportunities and this being one giant money 
orgy for rich people. That's the implementation that's just never really going to take off, especially now that we have learned how all of this can transpire, looking at the history of how the collapse of NFTs occurred. And now that people have become more acclimated to the concept of NFTs and the realization of how much of nothing they are, like how literally little value and little use and functionality they offer. You know, people have gone through this now once, now that there is more of a certainty and knowledge surrounding what kind of market this is, you know, there's no way people are going to, you know, FOMO their way into this again, especially with how stigmatized NFTs have become. Anytime anybody mentions NFTs in a positive light now, you get blasted for it. And if anything, these celebrity endorsements and people like Logan Paul, who actively scam people through his NFT game, have only just amplified the stigmatization of NFTs, stigmatization that is valid. Anytime anybody mentions involvement with NFTs, there's always going to be this huge pushback. Even video game companies are now afraid to touch NFTs or mention NFTs because not only is there a complete lack of interest, all the NFT projects that have launched from, you know, Ubisoft or Square Enix or whatever have been, you know, mass downvoted and disliked and have not receive much engagement. But beyond that, NFTs are now a PR liability. So game companies are trying to avoid touching that term with a 10 foot pole now. And that's what happens when people are vocal about the damage that NFTs have done both to the environment and to the financial standing of people who fell for this trick. And now with the market of NFTs being where it is, you know, it's a financial liability to engage with NFTs, not only because of the PR backlash, but also because there's just no money to be made looking at where the market is at right now. This current condition of NFTs might as well mark the death of this infamous landscape, and I am all for it. This pleases me greatly, and let's hope that this landscape stays dead. Unless we can find a way for NFTs to be useful and functional and not harmful in the way that they currently are. For gaming, what this means is that the likelihood of NFTs taking over gaming in the way that microtransactions have is practically zero, near zero, and uh, hopefully it stays that way. We have enough monetization tactics and schemes from corporations as it is that are kind of ruining the design of games. We don't need more to add on top of that. So hip, hip, hooray for the death of NFTs, or at the very least, that's one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the latest developments surrounding NFTs in the comments below. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.